everyone. Well, let's continue on Horror Month 2016 with Dracula's Daughter. Dracula's Daughter begins a few moments after Dracula ends. Count Dracula has just been destroyed by Professor Von Helsing. Von Helsing is taken by police to Scotland Yard, where he explains that he indeed did destroy Count Dracula, but because he had already been dead for, for over 500 years, it cannot be considered murder. Instead of hiring a lawyer, he enlists the aid of a psychiatrist, Dr. Jeffrey Garth, who was once one of his star students. Meanwhile, Dracula's daughter, Countess Maria Zaliska, with the aid of her maidservant, Sandor, steals Dracula's body from Scotland Yard and ritualistically burns it, hoping to break her curse of vampirism. However, Sandor soon begins to scourge her, telling her that that all this is that all telling her that all this is in her eyes is death. She soon gives into her thirst for blood. The Countess resumes her hunting, mesmerizing her victims with her exotic jeweled ring. After a chance meeting with Dr. Garth at a society party, the Countess asks him to help her overcome the influence she feels from beyond the grave. The doctor advises her to defeat her cravings by confronting them, and the Countess becomes hopeful that her will, plus Dr. Garth's science, will be strong enough to overcome Dracula's malevolence. The Countess sends Sandor to fetch her a model to paint. He returns to Lily. Countess Zaliska initially resists her urge, but succumbs and attacks Lily. Although the girl survives the attack, when Dr. Garth tries to hypnotize her to learn what happened, she suffers heart failure and dies. As the Countess totally gives up fighting her urges and the cure that and that that cure is not possible and discovers the truth about her condition, she lures from Transylvania by kidnapping Janet, the woman he loves. She intends to transform him into a vampire to be her eternal companion. Dr. Garth agrees to exchange his life for Janet's. Before he can be transformed, Countess Leska is destroyed when Sandor shoots her through the heart with an arrow as a revenge for her breaking her promise to make him immortal. He takes aim at Dr. Garth, but is shot dead by a policeman. Wow, that's, um, that's interesting stuff there. <laughs> anyway, let's get uh, the production elements and everything else about this movie. Universal Richie did not hold the rights to Dracula's guest, a chapter excised from Bram Stoker's original novel and the purported source material for the film. The story includes an encounter between a man, presumed by some to be Jonathan Harker, although the character is not identified as such, and a female vampire. The story does not establish a filial relationship between the, vampi between the female vampire and Dracula. Metro Golden Mayor executive David O. Selznick negotiated a contract in 1933 with Stoker's widow, Florence, to buy the rights to the chapter for an advance of $500 against a purchase price of $5,000. MGM's lawyers and executives were worried about the use of the word Dracula in the film's title, fearing that Universal would take legal action. Although Selznick's contract with Stoker explicitly listed Dracula's daughter as a possible alternate title. Marjorie was coding Tarantula in correspondence. <coughs> Selznick so hired John L. Balderson, who had previously worked on the 1931 Dracula and Frankenstein, to write the screenplay. Balderson's screenplay involved tying blue sets around the original film. In it, Von Helsing returns to Transylvania to destroy the three vampire brides seen in Dracula, but overlooks a fourth tomb concealing Dracula's daughter. She follows him back to London and operates under the same name, Countess Zaliski. She attacks a young aristocrat, and Von Helsing and the aristocrat's fiancé track her back to Transylvania and destroy her. The script included scenes that imply that Dracula's daughter enjoyed torturing her male victims, but that while under her control, the men liked it too. Also included were shots of the Countess's chambers being stocked with whips and straps, which she would never use on screen, but whose uses the audience could imagine. Regardless of any objections, the Production Code Administration, or PCA, would have raised to many aspects of the scenario. Walter's script could never have been filmed because Celtic's contract with Stoker expressly barred him from using any Bram Stoker characters that did not appear in Dracula's Guest. Selznick resold the rights to Dracula's Guest to Universal in September 1935 for $12,500, which included the rights to Balderson's scenario. Horror film scholar David J. Skull theorizes that this was Selznick's actual motivation in buying the rights in the first place, to profit from Universal's desire for a sequel tying up to the only obvious source material. Universal Studio had Carl Emily Jr., nicknamed Jr., one of James Whale, fresh from his great success with Bride of Frankenstein, to direct Dracula's daughter. Whale was idle, waiting for Irene Dunn to finish work on Magnificent Obsession so she could begin her work on Whale's showboat. 
glory of directing two horror films in a row, we also convinced Lemley to buy the rights to a mysterious novel called The Hangover Murders. Lemley agreed only after extracting a promise from Whale that he would direct Dracula's daughter next. Whale completed work on the next film, titled Remember Last Night, for release on September 14, 1935. The magnificent obsession completed filming on October 29th. With Dune freed up, Whale went to work on Showboat. Lemley would praise him A. Edward Sutherland, who was best known for his work in comedies. Sutherland had has sat had his little note to strike with his daughter as well and still left the studio with Hillier and Hillier came on to direct. The old scenario for the Universal film was written by R. C. Sheriff. It began with three scenes in the fourteenth century and centered on the Dracula legend, and then switched to the present day, focused on two engaged couples who visit Transylvania. The men who explore the ruins of Dracula's the men explore the ruins of, Ca- of Dracula's castle. One is later found insane and the other goes missing. Professor von Helsing is summoned and he tracks the missing man to London, where he is in thrall to Dracula's daughter, the Countess Z- Zelensky. When she attempts to flee with her thrall to the Orient by ship, von Helsing and their three and three others book passage on the same ship. During a violent storm, von Helsing destroys Dracula's daughter and, with her hold over the men broken, Sarah closes with a double wedding. This version was submitted on August 28, 1935 to the British Board of Film Censors, which rejected it, saying in part, Dracula's daughter will require half a dozen languages to adequately express his beastliness. On September 10th, Sheriff met with BVFC representatives and submitted a revised scenario two days later. The scenario was passed, but because its details were not recorded by the BVFC, it is unknown how much it differed from the original, or how much, if any, of that scenario was retained in the final script. Universal also submitted Sheriff's first draft to the PC on September 5, 1935, and encountered strong resistance from PC enforcer Joseph Green and had from the British. Green reported back to the script contains callous, contains callous offensive stuff which makes the picture utterly impossible for approval under the production code. A second draft was submitted on October 21st, but it too was rejected, with many of Green's objections centering on the 14th century, on the 14th century scenes in which Dracula himself appeared. It's unclear whether this submission was the same submission that the BBFC had previously passed. A third sheriff draft was submitted on October 24th and sheriff's fourth and final draft on November 10th. All remain acceptable, and while well for James Curtis suggests that Whale, who had no interest in the project and feared that his commitment to it might cost him control over the filming of Showboat, encouraged Sheriff to submit even more widely unacceptable versions in hopes of getting himself off the film. On January 14th, 1936, Professor E. M. Asher advised Green that the sheriff's script was not going to be used and the new script and that new script would be put together from scratch. Screenwriting dues were assigned to Garrett Ford. Dracula started with Gloria Holden's first starring role and reportedly she was extremely displeased having been assigned it. Like many actors, Holden looked down on horror films. She had also seen Bella Lugosi struggle over the years since Dracula was made to free himself from typecasting and feared that the role would lead to the same fate for her. Critic Mark Clark believes that, ironically, it may have been Holden's disgust for the role that led to the quality of her performance. Her disdain for the part translates into a kind of self-loathing that perfectly suits her troubled character. Initially, Lugosi and Jane Wyatt were at the star in the film. Universal also announced that Boris Karloff and Colin Clive, who were starred together in Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, would appear, and that Cesar Romero would play Dr. Garth. According to The Hollywood Reporter, before casting Pitchell, Universal had sought Herbert Marshall for the role of Sandor. None of them appeared except, after fashion, Lugosi in the form of a wax bust modeled in his image for use in Dracula's coffin. Some sources report that Lugosi was paid as much as $4,000 for his abortive involvement, but the only confirmed record of any financial agreement is the letter which Lugosi consents to the use of his likeness at no cost to greet the wax bust. Shooting on Dracula's daughter began on February 4, 1936, Rushed into production before Ford had completed the script. Because of a deadline clause, Universal's option of the property from Selznick. The script was not finalized until shooting had been underway for three weeks. The film was completed on March 10, 1936. Despite studio orders that the film be shot on a seven day week seven day per week schedule, Chloe ran seven seven days over schedule and fifty thousand dollars over budget, with final cost of film tallied at two hundred seventy eight. $278,380. Dracula's Daughter was the last in the first cycle of universal horror films that reached back into the 1920s. Publicly, 
Universal said it was because a British band horror films would cut too deeply into the revenue such films could generate. In truth, the cycle was suspended because, just before filming on Jack Dracula's daughter had wrapped, the Lemony family had lost control of Universal. Because of cost overruns on a number of pictures, Junior Lemley was forced to borrow $1 million on November 1st, 1935. The money came from J. Cheever Cowden, head of Standard Capital Corporation, and from Charles R. Rogers. When the loan was called in March of the following year, Universal was unable to repay it. Standard assumed control of the studio on March 4th, 1936, and Rogers replaced Junior as head of production. Rogers did not like horror films, and he shut down production on them following the release of Dracula's Daughter to focus on fairly like Deanna Durbin musicals. Universal will now return to, horror, to the horror genre for three years when it released Son of Frankenstein in 1939. Makeup artist Jack Pierce and special effects supervisor John P. Fulton worked together closely, especially on Holden's makeup design. They combined special lighting with a greenish, make, greenish grayish green makeup for Holden's final scenes, creating a power that contrasted with the more normally flesh toned makeups of the others in the scene. Heinz Romheld composed the score, and Albert as Douglas Tino redressed Charles D. Hall's set of Dracula's castle and created new sets including a London Bridge, the more where Dracula's bodies burn, and Countess Zuleika's apartment. The lesbian vampire has been a trope in literature dating back to Joseph Sheridan Lefon's 1872 novella Carmilla. Dracula's daughter marked the first time the trope, that the trope has, was incorporated into a film. The lesbian implications of Dracula's daughter were obvious from the start and were of great concern to the production code administration. PCA head brain took special notice of the scene between the Countess and her model, Lily, writing, This will need very careful handling to avoid any questionable flavor. The day before the scene was set to be shot, Universal's Harry Zinner asked Brain to read a draft of the scene. In response, Brain wrote, The present suggestion that Lily poses in the nude will be unchanged will be changed. She will be posing her neck and shoulders, and there will be no suggestion that she undresses, and there will be no exposure of her person. It was also stated that the present incomplete sequence will be followed by a scene in which Lily is taken to a hospital, and there will be definitely established that she has been attacked by a vampire. The whole sequence will be treated in such a way as to avoid any suggestion of perverse sexual desire on the part of Myra, or of any attempted sexual attack by her upon Lily. Gay film is during Vito Russo, noted in his book, The Silly Closet, <clears throat> the universal highlighted Countess Zuleika's attraction to women in some of its original advertising for the film, using the tagline, Save the Womb of London from Dracula's Daughter. He further cited Countess Zuleika as an example of the presentation of the essence of homosexuality as a predatory weakness. Some reviewers of the day picked up on and condemned the lesbian content, <clears throat> including New York World Telegram, including the New York World Telegram, <clears throat> which shows the Countess's tendency to wander around and giving the eye to sweet young girls. Other reviews missed it entirely, including the much New York Times, which advice, be sure to bring the kitties. Entertainment Weekly describes the encounter between the Countess and Lynn as so hot it's possible to imagine how, how it ever got past 30 censors, whereas Time on London finds only a subtle suggestion of lesbianism. Horace Scholar's Skull notes that the scene has to be seen as a classic lesbian sequence, although of a decidedly negative stripe. The scene between Countess Zuleika and Lily was included in the 1995 documentary film adaptation of Russo's book. Another lesbian tinged scene which has received less critical attention when the Countess is holding Janet captive. Described as the longest kiss never filmed, Countess Zuleika hovers lovingly over Janet, hovers and hovers, slowly descending to kiss her recumbent Janet still interrupted by the arrival of Dr. Garth. Bright Lights Film Journal, after knowing that Glory Holden in the title role almost single-handedly redefined the, 19, the 20s movie vamp as an impressive euro Dyke dyke bloodsucker, draws an implicit comparison between Count Zaleska's seeking to cure vampirism of psychiatry and the former physician of mainstream psychiatry of homosexuality as a mental illness, illness abused to hold by a minority in the profession. Zuska's cruising in the streets Zuska's cruising the streets of London is seen as a parallel to cruising for sex, although it tends to be a gay male activity, and as suggesting society's image of the lesbian as a as soul's predator, with the conclusion that Holden's striking mask like face and haunting 
luminous ice, or the intoxicating essence of transgressive lesbian power. Hmm. A joke pop song, Dracula's Daughter, was issued in 1962 by screaming alerts such as Savages, a British rock group with a never changing lineup of musicians and a taste for horror themes and zany humor. Hmm. So, some very interesting stuff, uh, if I do say so myself. So, overall, I give Dracula's Daughter three Jack Lanterns out of five. Well, join me tomorrow as we as we meet Son of Dracula. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.